In this video, I'm going to show you how to turn one of your photos into an epic composite. So stick with me as I show you how this is done. Right then, I think I should start off with a bit of a disclaimer uh, at the start of this video, and that is to say that this isn't uh, the only way, obviously, to do this sort of thing. Um, and I'm not the best at doing composites and stuff, and I think this is possibly like watching a monkey hit at a typewriter <laughs> at times and stuff. That's kind of the reason, one of the reasons why I've um, not done one of these um, videos before, because A, they do take uh, a while to do composites, and uh, also because a lot of it that I do is a uh, trial and error. So uh, you'll see me cock up and stuff. And I don't always do the, you know, I don't know all the shortcuts. I don't know the fastest way of doing stuff. I, I play around a lot with these, um, with the settings, this, that, and the other. And so um, you'll just have to bear with as I try to figure stuff out. Uh, and uh, yeah, so, um, but you know, like I said, a lot of people have asked me how I do stuff and you might still learn something anyway. So um, I'll try to explain the, as best as I can as I go through it what I plan on doing. So, um, for this particular composite, I want to uh, do a bit of a, a fantasy theme um, image. So, what I did is look up on Instagram various different uh, fantasy images that I like. Uh, there's lots of different fantasy feeds and stuff, and um, I found one picture that I quite liked, which is this one here, which is from um, Best Fantasy Art Club. It's pretty cool, um, you know, for what I want to do. It's, it's, there's elements to this picture that I think I can work with uh, sort of to kind of recreate. Now, um, I'll show you the starting picture that I have in a second. And basically, um, this one he, on this image by here, you know, I've, I've got a picture of a, a guy that I did a, a shoot with. doesn't look anything as cool as this, but he's wearing a costume and what have you. And uh, But what I like about this is the colours, the smoke, the feel, the vibe, you know, uh, the debris and all that kind of stuff. So I thought I'll try and show you how I'd go about um, creating an image sort of with this sort of feel to it. So uh, I will open my the image that I'm going to start working with, which is this one right here. So this is the raw file that I'm opening up in the uh, camera raw editor. And this was taken uh, from a shoot I did uh, for two years, three years ago, maybe. Um, this photo, this particular image wasn't actually selected by the client, um, but I quite liked it. I liked the attack mode and stuff. And I thought, oh, I'll do something with this. Now, if you look at this shot, uh, this isn't actually um, the best thing that I, I've done a lot of sort of trial and error with choosing different backgrounds to work with. Uh, to help do the cutouts and what have you. Always trying to go for one solid plain colour, whatever. Um, but I actually find that, uh, you know, I did go with grey because I was told that if you go with like 50% grey, it's like the, one of the easiest things to um, composite out, whatever, or cut out. Um, I don't actually find that's true because there's always shadows and stuff um, and areas of uh, the, the person, the subject, that kind of blends in too close. With a background so you can see it by here you know this it's it's kind of difficult to distinguish between these two areas there's not enough sort of contrast um to make an easy-ish job to cut cut the subject out uh, here you can obviously on the lighter areas but the darker areas you kind of struggle um so what i've actually found in the past uh since then is i just shoot against white um depending on what the depending on what the person is wearing obviously um I find white is an easy one because also the distance between if if, they, if I create some distance between the subject and the backdrop, um, the, there's enough sort of fall off from the light that the white actually turns a very light shade of grey, um, and again I find that helps. Uh, but also these days I actually just use green screen. I've I've bought myself a green screen backdrop which I find works really well. Again, just being careful that there's enough distance between the subject and the background. Um, because sometimes with the bright green green screen background, there's a, a spill created that then um, uh, spreads onto the, the subject and then you have to fiddle around and try to get rid of the green spill and stuff, yada, yada, yada. But uh, I find green screen works really well for what I do. Now, this guy, luckily, um, he doesn't have many sort of intricate details to worry about if, uh, if I zoom in a little bit. You know, his hair's... Pretty short, cropped and stuff. Um, there's a bit of a, a string here or the leather strap thingy. Um, but, you know, he hasn't got crazy hair or anything or fur 
uh, to worry about things. So uh, what I tend to do first is because I don't want to um, stylize the image yet, uh, I'll open it up in the camera raw editor and do some basic corrections, which is usually in this case, um, sort of exposure or whatever, or I'll, I'll lift the shadows and try to um, create some separation between the uh, the subject and the background. So, um, you know, in this case, I've, I've not actually done anything to it. So, uh, but you know, how I would do that is you've got all the different sliders here on the side. And the best thing to do is rather than just fiddle slightly, I tend to uh, adjust it all the way to one side. You can see, uh, or all the way to the other, just to see, oh, right, okay, it's affecting the shadows in that way. That's what this particular slider does, you know. And I mean, for instance, if I were to do that like that, I've now created a better sort of um, separation here in the shadows, you know, the darker areas and stuff. But uh, for this purpose, for this, I'm gonna, just going to leave it as it is. Um, but what I would say is if you wanted to sort of fiddle with the colors, uh, the exposure and whatever, just play with these sliders and uh, see what each one does. Obviously, you know, if you click on the highlight slider, it brings up all the highlights or takes them right down. So uh, you can actually, if you look at the, uh, the white sheet there, you can see how actually now you can see a lot more detail by dropping the highlights than if I were to put it all the way there. It's just one mass of white, isn't it, pretty much? Anyway, so... Um, I do that, play around with those, uh, get that right, and then, okay, happy days, I now go open image. Da, 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 da. Right, okay, cool. So, um, oh, I must say, make sure that you have the latest, if you are running a Photoshop, that you have the latest version. Um, so it's up to date, and uh, because they brought out some updates recently, which I didn't know about. And uh, when I updated it last night, uh, it's awesome. I found out that they have a new selection tool. It's called the object selection tool, which I will use to show you how to um, select this guy from the background, um, which is a great new feature. So uh, now there's there's a couple of different ways that you can select a subject. Um, there is one that I never really do, but I've seen other people do, which is the pen tool. Now, what you can do and it's, it's kind of, I find it laborious. Uh, you basically, you click, you click, you drag, you click, you drag, you click, you drag, da, 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 and you go around the entire subject, one dot at a time, as close to the edges as you can get it, and stuff, and you do this, and it's like, ugh, man, depending on what they're wearing, whatever the subject is, you do this sort of thing all the way around the person, and then you make your selection, and that then creates the um, the uh, marching ants thing. See, I don't even do it, so I don't even know to, how to uh, show you how to do that. Uh, all the way around, I'll just get rid of these. Um, and that, that's one way of selecting the subject and creating this cutout. I find that way too time-consuming, and I never bother with it. So um, that's one. Then also you have here in the lasso tool, Sorry, another lasso tool. Here in the uh, selection tool, you have a couple of different ones. Now, depending on how complex the the subject is, you can do stuff here with a magic wand tool, and just click and hope that it selects it. But it never does a decent job. Well, it can do. It just depends on how complex the thing is that you're trying to cut out. Say, for example, a solid color. If you did that, it would probably collect select it quite easily and quite quickly. Um, the other way is with the quick selection tool. <clears throat> so what you do, you just click on the subject, but you click and drag. If you click and drag over the area, Photoshop analyzes it pretty well, and it'll just jump to the things, the areas that you want to select. Paint, 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 paint. This is kind of how I would have done it in the past a lot. So I just get the quick selection. Um, and then if you press on a on a Windows key uh, keyboard, I don't know what the shortcuts are on a Mac, sorry. <laughs> um, but I press Alt to get the minus, so I just, I will then select there, uh, maybe here. Oh, actually, try to get the sword, see? And it kind of, then jumps to a different area, and you're like, oh, okay. Like I said, it could be quite time consuming just to make the selection. 
right? Um, but it's a, a necessary evil for doing composites. Oops. So I will just, there. you can increase the, this is just essentially like a brush. So you can increase the brush sizes by plus it, um, pressing the, uh, the bracket keys. Up and down, up and down. Which are the two buttons next to um, the two keys next to the letter P on a keyboard. Uh, and then, you know, I would just basically try and select the entire subject like this to create my cutout. Um, but you can see it hasn't done a great job. You know, it takes a lot of refining um, to make the selection. And then and then you could uh, you can create a mask from it. So say you have this um, selection that you want now, you hit the mask tool, mask thing. See, it's cut it out now. But you can see here, it's not great. Um, you might want to, hold on a second, with the, with the um, layer mask selected, you can double click it and it opens up this refine edge tool and the refine edge tool once that loads up oh come on here we go so you have the refine edge tool which then you can paint out areas you don't want and you can paint in areas you want so if i were to like just paint this area. Now my computer isn't the fastest. So every time I want to paint in or paint out something, I have to wait a few seconds and it does my head in because how long it takes. But there we go. See, I just painted that little area here because I have this icon here selected, which is the fine edge tool thing to remove stuff I don't want. Um, and I just painted, I select, I told Photoshop, Hey, I don't want this bit. And I looked at it and it did a better job. Um, and then if this bit that I've accidentally painted too much away and I wanted to bring it back, I choose this to bring it back. And I would say if I want to say, for instance, I wanted this area back, I would just paint over it. Just waiting for Photoshop to wake up. Come on. Is it doing it? I can't tell. I don't think it is. But anyway, that is the button to press to uh, get the selection back. But anyway, I'm just going to cancel. There we are. Look, it took its time. But those are the areas that I painted over um, to bring back because I may have removed too much. So, um, but anyway, I'll come back to that in a second. So I'll just, I'll cancel this here, the Refine Edge tool, and I will get rid of this like that. Whoops. Okay. I'll get rid of this selection as well. Let's go back out again. Now, there's another way <laughs> of uh, selecting a subject, which is with this tool here, with the uh, marquee tool, if you just draw a rectangle around the person like this, don't worry about the helmet, we're going to lose that, don't care. Um, actually, I'll just take it a little bit wider, like that. Now you have this, you have the subject essentially selected, well, kind of, it's not really though, is it? But look. You're telling Photoshop, hey, within this area, I want you to do something. So you've drawn this rectangle. You go up to select subject, press it. Photoshop is doing its AI thing. And uh, give it a second. Boom, look at that. It's looked at it and look how good a job it's done at selecting. Now, it skipped a few bits. But by and large, it's done a pretty decent job. There's a little bit there that it's missed and stuff, but you can always go back and try and correct that, you know? See, look at that. Thank you, Photoshop. You did a pretty decent job. I mean, there's, there's an area there that you can't, um, that it hasn't selected, uh, or has rather. Um, so now you might be able to work with that, which I probably would, which is good. Happy days. But let me just show you this new tool that they've brought in, which is here in this update object selection tool. Now, previously, if you were to do this sort of selection, it was often difficult at this stage to uh, delete or add extra selections um, because, well, you just couldn't or you, you'd have to paint stuff back in. It was just difficult or you'd have to paint stuff out in the you know, refine edge tool or later on on the alpha channel. 
etc etc but if I just go to that bit that I said it hasn't selected rather has selected uh, let me just see if I remember what it is you just tell Photoshop let's see what that does there ah there we go yes so you can then paint in extra areas or you can tell Photoshop to analyze extra areas right so uh, I am now I just draw a with the lasso tool. Aha, there we go. Right, okay, fine. Let me just start this again. So if you just go up to here in the modes, you've got rectangle and lasso. Now, with the lasso tool, it's great because you can selectively uh, choose areas that you can tell Photoshop to look at more carefully. So I will essentially, because everything within the marching band, uh, marching ant area is what is your selection. So you want, you know, you're going to take this as part of your composite, but there may be bits that you don't want it to take. But so we have this marching ant area here. I don't want this section to gray because that would come through onto my composite. So if I press uh, the alt button, if you can see very carefully, the little icon changes from a plus, which is add and then take away or the minus sign. So I keep my finger on the alt button or if you just go up here, you can actually enable the buttons to, um, this is the minus, and it'll just stay on the takeaway section or the plus, so the default. So if you just keep it like this, you can toggle with the keyboard shortcut um, to the plus and the minus, I believe. Why is that not doing that? Anyway, um, so I'm just going to paint around here and say, hey, Photoshop. Disregard that bit and give me a better selection. So I just have the leg and the edge of the sword. Bang, look at that. Uh, what happens if I, oops, that takes the entire thing. Uh, there we are. And I also want to select that bit of the sword by there. There we go. I want to select this part here. Now you can see there isn't much um, stuff to look at or not much contrast rather uh, between this and the background but anyway let's see what it does i will say hey photoshop give me this bit too look at that a little bit there but i wouldn't worry about that oh, thanks mate right <laughs> and so basically this is the sort of process i would go through to say to photoshop make a better selection it's great so let's do this that and the other uh that little bit of the leather strap there. Look at that. I want it. Boom. It's not great, but it's fine for now. So anyway, let's just say this is the selection you want to go with, right? So you could either create a, um, a mask straight away down here in the layer palette, or you go select and mask once you've done it. You press that. And this is the uh, air refine edge tool feature again that we had earlier. Um, this is where you can really kind of make a finer selection. So by default, currently I've got it so I can still see my back. Oh no, no, I've got it so that <laughs> I've got this bright red color here. You can see essentially this bright red color will be what the fake background is going to be. You know, your replacement background and stuff, you know. So you can really kind of see more clearly oh yeah that's a nice nice edge here what is done let me see if uh let me see if i resize this brush i know you can you can switch between the original and the red background like i said my my laptop's pretty slow at doing this thing um it should in a second did it i was doing something I was playing with this last night and it wasn't doing what I wanted it to do. So um, I don't know why it wouldn't show me the original background. So the other way, a quick workaround, is to change the opacity here of the slider. Instead of having a solid red, essentially, if you slide it down, you can change the opacity and it'll bring the... Um... Come on, let's do this here. Wow. Anyway, I don't want to keep you guys watching this boring thing as my laptop's struggling. Um,
But essentially, I would go through all this and I would see areas here that it's missed out. And you can then, with the Refine Edge tool, paint over those things, as I showed you earlier, um, to bring certain elements back. Again, you're just telling Photoshop to have a closer look. And um, I just tried that then and see what it does. Now, I hate the Refine Edge tool because I can never get the exact settings that I want um, <laughs> for these cutouts. So it often takes me a long time to go through. I see, I think I've done the wrong one. Uh, it, it takes me a long time to go through and make a decent selection uh, in the Refine Edge tool. Um, so let me just try this one more thing. I wish I kind of had elevator music. Okay, it's done a bad job, whatever. Okay, so let me just show you here. It's showing the, the background there. There you go, you can see the original. Um, then you have uh, various sliders here. Now these sliders affect the edge of your cutout. So if I just show you here on the solid red again. Come on. Now, like I said, Photoshop here has done a pretty decent job at uh, this particular cutout anyway. But you can see here, it's a very um, clean edge around the selection. It's actually pretty damn decent, if you ask me. But if you were to just mess around with these sliders, these are kind of, I find, very sensitive. Um, so you don't want to do like fractions at a time. But I'll give you an example. If I just turn this feathering up to there, you should see the edge um be a lot more feathered i do believe photoshop's doing something there we are <laughs> now obviously that's terrible and you're like right that's way too much feathering so undo that so that often there's a bit of fiddling around required to get these sort of settings uh to how you want them and i would say that one's you know very good to work with really um so I would fiddle with these, the edges to make sure that your cutout is, you know, it looks, it looks realistic. Um, and then I will then choose my output to be new layer with layer mask. And then I'll go, uh, yeah, remember settings or whatever. So I hit OK. So what it's done, it's created a new layer. So it's put my back, my original image there. It's turned it off as a, new, uh, a background. So this is my new layer with a layer mask. <clears throat> Now, in the layer mask, if you can see here on the thumbnail, you have a white and a black area, which is, is showing you, you know, essentially what your cutout is. Now, there's a way of refining it even more. Now, let's go back up to this bit here that I've accidentally selected too much of the gray background. Say at this point, I want to get rid of this because obviously I want to get rid of it. If you just use the brush tool, maybe it's a bit smaller. Right, because I want to paint away this area. I will paint this away on the layer mask, not on the original or anything with the with the eraser tool or whatever. I will do it on the layer mask because you can undo it uh, if you make a mistake. You can, you know, several stages later you can you can undo it. It's, you know, if I were to have deleted this with a eraser tool um, and then carried on working for twenty minutes. I wouldn't be able to go back to it because I've done 20 minutes extra work. I won't be able to go back to this particular stage and, you know, put the information back in, uh, the, the part of that picture back in and stuff. I could, but it's a long way of doing, uh, it's, it's a long way around. Don't do it, <laughs> basically. So get the brush tool. And if you have your uh, colors set to default, so you've got the black and the white, right? So black is the areas you don't want to see. And white are the areas that will that you do want to see. So the white area on the on the uh, layer mask, at least, is represents the guy, and the black is the area that you've cut out. So I have my brush tool. I've set the flow to hundred because you know it's like a hose pipe. That's how much you set it to. If you set it to flow at hundred, it's coming out full power kind of thing. If that's how I kind of see it. And if you turn the flow down, it's like a trickle, you know, less power. But I know I just want to quickly paint this away. So, like I said, if I show you now, just if I were to just draw on this now with with uh, with um, the black. Oops, uh, switch that around. 
Come on. Oh, I see too much of a feather pitch. Uh, right. I will turn the hardness to 100 because I want a harder edge. I don't want a feather to right. See, so now I'm painting uh, the original background. You can see back in. Um, let me just give you a bit more if I were to. Remember, there was a white bit here. Look, that's just, this is the all, all the background. I'm painting that all back in, but I'm doing that on the layer mask. So white is bringing back the, uh, the, the stuff that I didn't really want to see. You know, it's the old background. So I'll undo that. Uh, so zoom back in. And uh, I will choose black. Black brush. You can press X. It's a shortcut to toggle between the two different colors. And if you press D, that's default. So if you have a different color in here, I don't know. Look, it was set to that. Um, oh, obviously layer mask. Uh, anyway, press D to default the colors and X to toggle between them. Right, so... Um, so I've got the color as black and I'll zoom right in and you might want to just turn a slight feathering of the edge of the brush just to not make it too precise. And then I will just be very precise and go in and 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 draw, draw, draw. There we go. All right. Take it in. Maybe it's it's quite good just to bring it in. Maybe like just like a pixel or two, just to get rid of the absolute edge. I mean, if this was green screen as well, it would stand out even more. But uh, I would just do this, right? Just draw it. Now you might be thinking, "Oh my word, this sounds like a nightmare to do this on a complicated subject." And it, even on this simple subject, you still have to go and check around the entire subject to make sure it's it's you know as good as can be kind of thing now say for example um you sucked at this like i do uh, or you just didn't have um the patience or the time to spend doing the cutouts say for example you you prefer to do the actual editing of the pictures and stuff um there are services out there that will do the cutout part uh for you and it's, you know, most of them are paid for services. There's there's uh, websites such as Fiverr.com, Fiverr, so it's got two R's, .com, and there's there's people on there who will do the cutouts for a certain price. You just, you know, send them your picture, ask them what you want them to do, and they'll do it for you and send it back as a file that you can work with. Um, but there's a company that I've used in the past, which I found very good, and it's called Deep Etch. Now, the way this works on Deep Etch is that you sort of, uh, you buy credit uh, with the with the actual company, um, so you know you you pay twenty pounds or whatever, and that buys you X amount of credits and stuff. And what you do, you upload um, an image, and they will basically assess how complex they think the the retouching or the the cutout job is, is to do, and uh, they'll send you back and they'll say, oh, it will cost ten credits to do this work, for example, right? So um, if you were to send a, a, something like this, it's fairly complex here with the edge and they might say, okay, this is gonna, this is gonna cost X amount of credits to, to do, whatever. And then you were like, great. But the, the good thing is as well, as you can see here, they have an express service thingy. Um, so if you're not in any particular hurry to get these cutouts back, you know, um, the, it's cheaper. So if you wanted it in a hurry, you have to pay a bit more and then um, you'll get the pictures back quicker, which is great if, uh, you know, if you're doing stuff for a client who wants fast turnaround stuff and, you know, you just don't have the time. You know, for instance, you could essentially, straight from a photo shoot, upload an image here. Uh, they can assess it, do all their stuff. And then, you know, by the time you're home, they could already have said, yes, we can do this for you. And then, you know, you can get on with us, the other stuff. And then, you know, uh, they can get this over to you ASAP. So deepedge.com, check it out. Right, so I could actually work with this. Uh, I think this is pretty good. However, um, here's one I made earlier. <laughs> right, so this is a cutout. Uh, this guy's called John. I've gone through it and I've prepared this as a cutout. So in the meantime, let me just get this out of the way. I'll chuck him down there as a backup. Now, one important thing 
whenever you're editing with uh, doing composite work, um, always make copies of your layers as you're going along. Uh, you can always turn them off. I tend to just, you know, like you can see here, I just have a layer, a copy, and that's the identical thing underneath here and here. So just get into the habit of making copies and just, you know, I, I the files will get quite big, but what I tend to do then at the end is just, I can delete the stuff that I don't really need. Um, it's just that it's, it's, it's good practice for what I've been doing is to um, make copies in case you have to revert back to... Um, an older version of your edit, etc. Okay, right, let's get started with this composite thing in me jag. So, this is, uh, like I said, this is the kind of thing that I was after. I like the landscape, I like the moody clouds here, and I like the debris, uh, the smoke, the vibe of this one character, you know, being a boss in the picture and stuff, you know, and uh, what's going on here. So, I've, uh, I was looking at my stock photos that I've got, um, on my computer. Now, I did find one. Is this it? There we are. That's my background um, that I'm going to work with. Luckily, it already has these sort of colors, uh, which is kind of like cool for what I want to do, you know? Um, has a bit of a, a burn umber kind of feel to it. So that'll be our foundation image that I'm going to put John on top of, right? Okay. So, um, where I get these stock photos from, I actually uh, paid for, I'll pop that here, um, membership to Shutterstock. Now, they have various things. What I did, ooh, they're running a free one month trial. Cancel anytime. Hey, check that out. I might do that again. Hang on, what'd you go with that? Anyway, um, oh, you want to get 10 images. Okay. Three woman trial, whatever. Anyway, whatever. Check it out. Um, <laughs> I now Shutterstock isn't the cheapest, I find. Um, but I paid this uh, membership fee, and I had it for a month. And basically, they've got lots of different things on here um, that you can download uh, as part of your membership. So I basically spent a whole month downloading as many pictures as I could, stock photos. Now the good thing is on Shutterstock. Say so I don't know. Um, uh, Beach. Right. Look at all these great backgrounds you've got. You know, you can do great composites with this sort of stuff, right? So uh, I would then download hundreds of photos, <laughs> you know, on all different kind of themes, trying to think, right, what could I be working on in the future? Um, so Shutterstock is what I'd use, but like I said, it's not the cheapest, but they are high resolution images. A lot of them are 300 DPI, they're print quality. So um, that's great. However, if you wanted to do stuff that's mainly for the web um, and you're not so worried about, you know, printing the pictures, then there is a free alternative, I will let you know. And one of the websites that I like to use is this one here called pexels.com. Again, they have lots of stock photos. Now, these are free to use. These are only 72 DPI. Do you know, a lot of these actually make really good backgrounds for your phone or for your laptop, <laughs> this sort of thing. Um, so say if I were to look for beach on here, they have all things beach and sea related, etc., etc. There we go. Look, that's fairly similar to something you find on Shutterstock. Um, but like I said, these are just uh, 72 DPI. However, they are large files, you know, in pixels, uh, they're often very big pictures. So they're great to work with as an alternative. Um, I just found in the past, I, I, was doing a, I was doing a shoot and I was using backgrounds from pixels and then my client wanted to print them and then the, uh, the service said it's too low resolution. So um, that's why I ended up buying uh, stuff from Shutterstock. Okay, so let's get John on this background, shall we? So I will get my cutout. I will just basically have my uh, move tool here um, selected. Click on him. You can see it's got him active there. I will look, I can just move him around in a funny manner. But if I just drag him over there and I go drag drop. Come on, sir. Where have you gone? There he is. Right. Okay. Now, John's too big in the picture. 
Okay, so what I will do. Do you know what? I've turned these notifications off and they keep popping up. Right, go. Cool. Right, so uh, now what I want to do is make him look a bit smaller and that he is actually standing on the background. Oh, look, he has no feet. Um, obviously, that's wrong. Uh, but I can. And also, what I want to do, I don't want to lose too much of his legs kind of stuff out of the shot. You know? So uh, I might just do this but look the sword is at the top so anyway what I'll first of all I'll do I'll press Control T and then I will just take the corners down and I will scale him down to something a bit more workable and also a bit more uh, complementary within the frame I'd say I'd hit enter boom see what I said about doing uh, copies now just now as I brought him in before I made that change I should have made a copy but anyway um, there we are. Now, I'm kind of looking at the background there and thinking that kind of looks right where he would be standing. Looks like he would be placed there. There's there's certain tricks you can do um, and techniques to try to make it look as if the subject is actually matching the, the background as to where he's standing and stuff uh, to do with horizon lines and all sorts of stuff again i'm a bit rubbish at that so i kind of do it by eye <laughs> but if you look up on youtube uh some tutorials about how to do the uh, composites to you know to match horizon lines um there's plenty of tutorials out there uh so anyway so i've placed this guy here now um i should pop him down maybe a little bit more do it. there you go there i might move them over to the side again this you can just fiddle with to however you're happy okay so first thing i really want to do keep it more central is now the colors basically uh you have this very colorful background here well you know very rich colors that don't match what's going on with john so what i will do is i will take the layer i will duplicate it by pressing Control j or you could always click and drag it down to make new layer like this and make a layer. Um, but anyway, I will take this layer copy and I will go up to filter and blur and choose average. Give it a second. Now, what that's done is um, Photoshop's essentially it doesn't look like a blur, does it? But it's mashed all the colors uh, in that picture together, I believe, uh, to give you an average of all the colors. So that layer now, what I will do, I will place that above John, but just so that this particular layer affects the layer, because obviously it's on the top layer now, it's above everything else, but I only want the, the color to affect John. So I will create a clipping mask. So if you basically hold, hover here to the corner, press Alt, it's not hovering to the corner. Anyway, um, press the Alt key. If I'm, see, see how it changes just as I move up and down? I've got my finger on the Alt key right now. And what it's saying is that this layer, this average layer, is going to apply only to John's once I click it. Look. So, you can see now it's only affecting uh, John, right? But you're like, hey, that's no good. I mean, it looks kind of cool, but this isn't what I want. So I will now um, go to the blend modes. I love blend modes because I will select it and I will just literally step through it often to see what it does. Right. OK. Uh, OK. Right. I can see John now. Um, but I know what I actually wanted to do is overlay. That seems to be fairly close in colors as if, hey, it feels more like he fits within the scene. Personally, it's still not quite right for me. So what I will do is just dial it back a bit. And I will do that. You can either do in the, the opacity or the fill or whatever. Um, I'll just bring it down. But look, if you turn it off, nothing. And then that's back to maximum. So if I just dial it down slowly. And just look at it and think, yeah, that kind of makes it look like, yeah, all the ambient light is having an effect on John. So I'm getting rid of this, you know, the, the flash color. Uh, from my from my flash or speed lights back then, so I will just bring that up a little bit, like that. 
Boom. Let's just say with that, again, you can fine tune it, dial it in even more if you like. Um, what I want to do actually, I'm just looking at his head. His head's looking a little bit darker or redder compared to his arms. I'm kind of happy with his arms and I think his legs are a bit too yellow for my liking as well. So I will. Just a second, see what it's doing. Ooh, what the flip is going on there? Right, adjustment brush. Just bring these back to default. To open up this window, I basically selected his layer and then I pressed Control, Shift and A. It opens up the camera raw editor again. Um, and I just want to, I find it easier to uh, make my changes within this tool. And I will just brighten his face a little bit. So you can selectively here with this adjustment brush, select certain areas of the body, the subject. I will turn this off. See this little red marker thing? Wherever you um, start making different adjustments, these things pop up and I find them annoying anyway. Um, it's just an indicator for you to know where you've made these adjustment, adjustments if you wanted to tweak them. But anyway, I just get rid of it. Uh, so you can see here, if I were to do that, it's way too bright way too dark. Um, so I will just fiddle a little bit there and then I go down and have a look at his leg and uh, do this. In this instance I'm just going to be cheating it a little bit. I'm just going to take the saturation down on his legs just a tad. You could actually try it with this as well. I fiddle with this one as well, just to bring some of the yellow down, but uh, whatever. Okay, so press okay. And hopefully, there you go. His face is kind of evened out a little bit. Um, you can still make further adjustments. So, um, next, right. If I look back at this picture here, right. Hmm, cool, embers, which is kind of like, I don't know, explosions and debris or whatever, moving around fire and all that kind of stuff. Now I have on my computer uh, here, these are all the things that I've bought from Shutterstock, right? I have loads. Um, now I've categorized them into uh, various themes. So I've got elements. Now these are various uh, stock items that I've bought in the past. Uh, which, like I said, are very handy. So one of my favorites for embers is this one. I'll bring that one in. Um, actually, I could open this one as well. Like that. Okay. Now, the great thing is when you're buying uh, stock or downloaded stock images um, that you want to use in composites, look for stuff that has a lot of black in it. Because basically, um, you can very easily in layer modes, get rid of all the black, just like super quick. And um, you'll be left with whatever stuff that you actually want to keep, in this case, the embers. So what I will do, I'll take this here and I'll put it on to, oops, cancel. I will drag and drop it on here. Oops, it's defaulted it as a clipping mask. You can undo it as well. But pressing Alt again, you know, if it has become a clipping mask, press Alt again, click, and it'll get rid of it. It's just a normal layer now. So here's that layer, right? That are embers. It's like, oh, that's pretty cool, All right? Fine, but obviously there's a ton of black here. I don't want that. Get rid. So if you just go to your blend mode and select screen, you see, and let me just show you again. See. So I've got it selected a screen. Now it's got rid of all the black, but you still have the embers. Look, you see, isn't that amazeballs? Right. There's that one there. And I also want to put one over here, right? So I will basically just uh, control J, duplicate the layer, control T, and I will now Photoshop fairly recently mess this around. Come back. Here we are. Right. Okay. Where the resize tool, they they just changed it, and I was like, I'm still trying to get my head around it. Right. So I'm gonna pop that over there, roughly. Good thing is because it's just embers, you don't have to worry about the shape so much. So I got one on either side. Uh, they're kind of mirroring each other, but you won't be able to tell. Um, so 
Now, if you if I zoom in and have a look at the actual embers here, you can see they're just stationary, you know? They just look like blobs of paint or whatever. I want to create some drama and some um, movement, you know, in the actual whoosh, embers. So the way I would do that, I'll select this one because, why well, is that one in there? <laughs> um, incidentally, if you wanted to rename these layers, if you have multiple layers and it gets complicated, then you just, you just double click on the layer, on the word, and you can just call it embers or whatever you want to do, embers left, All right? And then you can change that one to embers right. Yeah. Boom. Uh, so anyway, I want to affect this here. Uh, I want to create some movement. So very simple way of doing it is go to filter, blur, motion blur. Now the motion blur tool is live kind of stuff. You can see as you are fiddling with it before you apply the actual blur, what the effect is going to be, which is brilliant. Um, now you can increase the strength of this blur by sliding this slider around. Watch now, I'll just take all that, see all that? The further, obviously that's ridiculous. <laughs> that's way too much. And then this is back to normal, it's not doing anything. So just kind of like, you know, have a play, go, oh, that's not bad. Mm, it's not bad. Uh, okay, cool, yeah, yeah, that's all right. That's pretty cool, uh, you know. Um, but another great thing, you've got this little wheel by here and that, you can see this line, it corresponds to the direction of the blur, right? So if I wanted these these embers to go shoot over to the other direction, I would just drag it and turn it this way. Look at that. Yeah, so that's adjusting that thing. Um, in this case, I think that's what I'm gonna go for. Maybe just a little bit like that, and maybe just a little bit less on the, on the actual motion blur like that. And then, oh, this is the preview window which I don't think is particularly good. Photoshop, I think, could do a better job. Uh, anyway, um, I can look here anyway and see what it's doing. So I'll hit OK, give it a second, and it's applied this blur effect onto this particular one. If I go over here, I want to apply it to this one. Um, now, because I've just applied this blur, uh, I, I, I want to apply it, obviously, in the same direction. Um, to this layer, I just, all I have to do is go back to filter and it's it's kept it, Facebook, um, Facebook, <laughs> Photoshop is remembering it, so that's my setting, I just click that again, or you can do the, the keyboard short, shortcut, the um, Alt Control F. Hit it, give it a second, and boom, it's applied this motion blur to it. Okay, next. Uh, actually, before I move on, I'm just gonna duplicate the background layer, uh, and I just wanna create a bit of a blur because, well, it depends of what the aperture is. Imagine if you did a shot like that. But generally, you know, your subject's more in focus. There is a bit of blur in the background anyway, but you could just want to blur the background a bit more. You know, just throw out the focus a little bit more. And there's multiple way ways you can do it, but uh, a quick and easy solution for what I tend to do, you've got different blur options. You've got, um, uh, where is it gone? Oh look, vanishing point. Maybe I should play with that. <laughs> that, yeah, okay. Anyway, uh, right, so Gaussian blur. No, that's too much. So I'll just see what it does, right? Okay, that's original. Bring it up a tad. Not too much. But what this does though, it's, boy, it's not that precise, is that it applies this particular blur to the entire image. Now, if you think of a real photo, um, the area closest to the, to, to, you know, if the subject's in focus, everything on that focal plane is going to be in focus. Um, and everything in front of that is going to be slightly softer. And then, you know, the same thing goes with the background, etc., etc. et, cetera, et cetera. Um, But this creates a slight blur across everything, you know, going all the way back. Because um, it's just affecting generally the image. Now, I know with the different blur uh, features you've got, you can actually selectively choose uh, where... The blur area starts and finishes, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, I don't fiddle with that because I'm not particularly good at it. Hands up, I admit that. Um, but again, this is kind of just like an introduction of how to do these um, some of these tips and tricks and composites, etc. But uh, yeah, have a play up there in the blur area. 
Good luck. Uh, right, fine. Next thing I want to do is uh, I want to add some. I want to add some atmos here in the foreground, right? Currently, because John's down here on this layer, these embers are essentially in front of him, you know, because they're on they're on the toppermost layer, and I could put some stuff behind him if I wanted to. Uh, let me get some smoke going here. So what I will do, I will choose, I have some brushes. I have a lot of brushes. I will create a new layer and go to my brush tool. Oops, not there. Um, I have some smoke brushes that I've downloaded in the past and I can't remember where I got them from. Sorry. However, there is again a website where you can get lots of free Photoshop brushes. Now Photoshop brushes are amazing for adding all sorts of details and textures to your to your images. This website here, um, Brush Easy, has stacks and stacks of uh, free and paid for um, brushes that you can use. Look here, smoke brushes that you can then um, download, install and use. So I've done that before, so I've downloaded it. I've gone to my brush tool. In this drop down menu here, you also have a little um, settings cog where you can then import those brushes that you downloaded and they'll just pop up over here. We have lots of different folders for different uh, brushes. So I know this brush by here because uh, I was working with it recently. Uh, if only I can remember where it came from in here. Anyway, uh, so yeah, so here's this brush, okay? Uh, let me just make this a bit smaller. Now my flow is set to 100 and I've got, this is gonna be my smoke layer. And I've just got it as white for now. Is it? No, it's, uh, now it's white. Okay. Now I go like this and I just click on it. You can see how it's creating this cool smoke effect and you're like, wow, that's pretty awesome. Personally, I don't actually want the bottom of the smoke. I just want the thinner top layer of the smoke. So all I'm doing, I'm just taking the brush slightly lower like this, and I will just take it out of the shot and apply a little bit like that. Now see that smoke is now in front of John, but it's white, it's too white. So again, I will often just play with my uh, blend modes just to see, first of all, what this does if I step through them. Uh, keep going, keep going. Sometimes they don't make that much of a difference. Other times they do. So I would either go through all those and just see again if there's anything that I'm more happy with. Um, and then the other option, if you wanted to reduce it, I mean, you could just change the color <laughs> to make it less white. Um, is just to change the opacity a little because that'll bring in more of the amb the other colors um, but again I think no that's not quite right I'll tell you what I'll start again on that one and I will create a, I will pick a color from within this right so if I press I on the keyboard I've got my color picker here and I'll go for a fairly bright color see if I just drag you can see how it's selecting different colors I've got my finger on it now, and but I want it to be a fairly light shade for the smoke, like this. So it's more in keeping with the colors that are actually in this image. And I'll go back to my brush tool and then change it like this. Apply that on there. Bit of smoke. Um, again, go through my, step through it. See what that's doing. Oh, look at that. Bit weird, isn't it? Um, eh, that's not too bad. Lighter color. Fairly yellow. Right, actually, I know this looks a bit mad here, but what I'm going to do, you see, it's in this weird thing. So now I will actually bring down the opacity on this one. then I will build up different layers. So I will, I will create another layer 
Uh, you can change the direction as well of the smoke or the brush by going up to, again to the brush tool, you have this thing here, which again, messes with my head. But you can see the shape of this here. And if I flip it to just a bit like this, it twists it around. And if I flip it again like that, it twists it around. And I always struggle to figure out, right, which way, how do I flip and flip this flip and flippy flop thing around, right? Okay. Whatever. Uh, and you can also change the, uh, the size of the brushes here. And the shape by clicking on this. Look, I've made it really thin. Um, back to original. Uh, oh, yeah, because this is quite handy, turning on its side to bring in some smoke on the sides. So I'll just bring this, oops. Bring this down a bit. If you press Control, then plus and minus helps you resize the picture. Right. Um, okay, back onto that layer. And I will just add a bit of smoke like this. Uh, I would have thought, yes. A bit of smoke there. Okay. See how I'm slowly building that up? Not bad, not bad. Um, now... He's got a lot of light at the back behind him here, which uh, I kind of, I want to make a bit of a lens flare effect. Um, again, I can do that with brushes. So I create a new layer. So there's John. And because I'm putting this lens flare behind him, I'm going to pop it onto this layer, which is behind him. Uh, <laughs> again, I'll keep the color that I chose from the color, uh, with a color selector. I'll go back to my brush tool. And again, I've got, um, Lens flare, uh, lens flare, different lights selected, uh, downloaded. You can see this here. It's a big old light burst. I'll press it and you can see what it does. I'll kind of line it up to there. Boom. You see that? Wow. That's pretty cool. Yeah. As is, but, uh, it's a bit too much. I don't, I don't like, um, I think I can reduce some of this, the lines here for the lens flare. So, um, and actually, because it's on a separate layer, I can actually shift it around a little bit. You see, I'll chuck that over there. It's quite cool. Also helps make him stand out a bit, you know? Hey, he's the star of the show. Uh, so filter blur, and I will go add a bit of a Gaussian blur to it. Come on. Let Photoshop do his thing. There we are. Right, okay. Maybe something like that. But what I actually, I said that wrong. Uh, <laughs> the lens flare is behind him, but if you think about it, I also want to create a bit of a halo around the edge of him, as if the light is spreading past him, as would be, you see in movies and real life, do you know what I mean? So I'm going to actually pop this above John, in front of him, and then I'll paint away the section of the lens flare that I don't want. The middle bit here right now like i said earlier i could do this with the eraser tool but if i erase it it's gone so what i can do is create a mask so i've got the layer mask so don't forget white is the area you see and if you choose black is the area you want to paint away so i'll go back to my brush tool and i will adjust that there i don't want that that big okay and I will just reduce the flow as well because I don't want to be killing it. Oops, hang on a second. Nope. Let's move in. Come on. Oh, it's to do with the flow. Right. I'm going to take this out a second. So I'm painting on the layer mask to get rid of this. But I'm taking it. Let's soften the edges a bit more. Taking it to the uh, the edges a bit more. Get rid of that. Tell you what, what makes it easier to see is I'll click on the actual layer again there and invert it. So it'll just change the color so I can see it just for this exercise. Whoops, back to the layer mask. So again, I've got black selected and I'm just, but I want a bit of the blue to be around the edges. Okay. I told you these things take ages, but you wanted these videos. Ha ha ha. Right. Um, okay. Bring 
his face through now. I'm going to soften that edge a bit more. Okay. Um, just there. Now, because the light is coming sort of from that side across, I want I want more of the haze to be on this side of the face and less so on this side. Uh, like that. A little bit top. And make that a bit bigger. Soften that a little bit there. Because I've chosen this similar color, it's not going to stand out that much once I flip it back to how it was. So I'm not too worried about it. Um, paint, 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 paint. See? Come on, come on, come on. Right. And then I'll just flip it back. I'll invert that. Boom. Okay. Too strong. Too strong still. So let me uh, see if I can either just do it with the flow there. You can try that. See? Yeah, okay. Okay. But again, have a play with the blend modes and see what that does. If that does anything. Ooh, that's not bad. Linear Dodge is taking the colour out of it. But I do want the colours though. I'll tell you what, I will go back to the original and I will just, just reduce the uh, fill a bit like this. Okay, right. Anything else? Mm. Uh, no, I think that's okay. Actually, tell a lie. Doosh. Put that on there. I will again go to default white uh, with my brushes. I also have debris brushes. And I have them somewhere in my selection here. Ah, debris. Debris. Here we go. I like some debris on a shot like this. So I'll put up my setting. Look, it's uh, too small. So I will just make it a bit bigger for what I want. Oops. Like that. You can see here, uh, I have all the debris on another layer. One, check that one over there. Uh, that'll do for now on this layer. Let me zoom in so you can see how this stuff looks. It's, uh, it could do with that motion blur, couldn't it? Or a motion blur at least. So I'll go back to filter, blur, motion blur. Still got the settings. Um, I might just, no, that's okay. I'll go with that. And then definitely white always works really well when you fiddle with different blend modes. And if it's got a nice color background, so it'll go. Let's have a look. There we are, that's pretty cool. See that? Yeah, let's go with overlay, shall we? More debris. Okay, so that's on top of John, and I might want to put some behind him. So I'll create a new layer just behind John there. More debris. Don't forget, name them. Um, brush. Oops. I'll choose a different one this time. Again. Make it a big R. More debris. This time, sort of behind John. There. 
You see how the debris is behind him. See if I were to, oopsies. Yeah, uh, so the debris is all behind him there. So that's quite cool. Uh, of course, it's too white, so I will just go back to uh, overlay. Soft light like, no, soft light's not bad. But again, I wanna apply some motion blur to it because it's all too stationary. So again, filter is the last thing I did. Apply the blur, apply some blur. Happy days. Now, you might think, oh, that's not looking too bad, is it? But there's a magic trick to this uh, that I always love doing, um, which will make this thing pop. So, I will, uh, with this image here, see I've got all these layers. I want to create one layer that has all of these, all the separate elements as one particular layer. So I will go to the top, and I'll press Control, Shift, Alt, and E. Please be correct, otherwise I look like a fool. Please, yeah. Ha! No, I was wrong. Hang on. Ah, that's still not the right one, is it? I told you there's like a monkey hitting the keyboard, right? Control. Ah, mm -mm. oh, there you go. I did it. <laughs> there we go. So it's Control, Shift, Alt, and E, like I said. And it creates this uh, image, which is everything all as one. It's essentially like a JPEG now, uh, one separate layer. And then I will go back into the raw editor where I work my magic. So control, shift, and A will open up the raw editor. Now in here, this image will become more epic. Now, you can play with all the sliders. Uh, on, a shot like, on a shot like this, what I would like to do is to give it grunge, yeah? To make it look gritty and you know more detailed. So one of the quickest and easiest ways to see how you can do that and what it does is getting the clarity slider and turning it all up to 100. Straight away, I think that's much better. Yeah, turn it up to 100, boom. Uh, in this case, it's very saturated. So I might bring the saturation down. See that? Uh, I might bring a bit of the vibrance as well to make it look a bit more like a movie poster style. Uh, you might think, oh, the highlights here, too bright. The highlights, let's bring them down a bit, you know? and. It'll obviously, if you do that, it affects the entire image. Um, you can selectively bring down areas, like say for instance here, the yellows, um, or the, you know, it's just too much saturation going on here. So I've got the saturation slider taken down a little bit. You can just paint over those areas and bring them down. Because it's the color yellow as well, actually, I, I, I tend to just quickly fiddle with this slider to bring it down. Um, the other thing, I notice his legs are quite bright, <laughs> so um, I'm just going to bring the uh, the brightness of the legs down as well. So again, reset that to there. Just bring the exposure down to there. Don't worry, it's a bit too dark. I know, um, and I will just dial it back in a little. You know, um, and with this as well, you can just you can add a new one. And then uh, again, select other areas you might want to darken. You know, uh, just have a play. You can you can darken, you can brighten, whatever you want to do. And see, you have the little markers, which if you hover over it, it should come on, come on. It should basically show you the areas that you've um, previous. Oh yeah, look, see, there's a marker there. So then you can click on it, and that's active, and you can undo those selections. By having these markers. Anyway, I'm going to undo that, undo that, undo that, undo that, undo that. No. Uh, and uh, yes, so what I've done, I've actually got a preset. Uh, if I go back to this mode here, you, you've got all the different sliders here. Uh, sorry, different tabs. So you can fiddle around with the sliders to give you a great look. Um, here with the curves, uh, again, you can sort of crush the blacks and make it look more matted, you know, have a fiddle, but obviously as in reducing the contrast in the blacks and stuff and, you know, do something like that, whichever you want. Um, so here in the sliders, you do all that, um, sharpening, noise reduction. I'm going to leave that. I'm not worried about it. Uh, here in the hue and saturation, 
and luminance uh, sliders, you can selectively choose the colors within the shot to, to change. So, uh, say for instance, if you wanted to go with the oranges, see, with the slider here, you can selectively choose those, uh, whatever color. Uh, if there's any green in this shot, which I can't really see too much, um, no, it's not really doing anything there. Uh, again, the saturation, you might want to look this. It's just for your liking, there might be too much orange. You can bring all the oranges down. But like I said, it affects the entire image. That's actually pretty cool. I like that. Um, and the brightness as well with the luminance. Again, with orange, you can change all this. Whichever way you want it. Play with these sliders. They're brilliant. Um, again, split toning. These are quite strong, as in not strong, uh, quite sensitive. So I tend to just put them, the saturation layers here, just very subtle. And so it affects the highlights and the shadows. So all the shadows I can change. Actually, let's, let's make it obvious what I'm doing here. You see, so all the dark colors will change the hue to whatever you'd like. Nice thing with these, if I want the highlights to change their hue, you go through here. This is a great way of creating cool sort of cinematic uh, looking images. And then if you wanted to um, split the difference, you've got the balance here. So you can just slide the slider around again here it, and then uh, pick a color you're happy with. Actually, that's pretty epic. Um, and then you can add grain if you wanted to. I'm not going to bother. Uh, one thing I might want to do is create more vignette. There's a vignette kind of going on anyway, but um, I might want to, if you wanted to do more. Up here, you have the radial filter. Click and drag, and then open that up like that. And then pull that down to the middle. Good thing is, as well, you can, if you go near it, you can change the direction. So it's not quite vignetting. Uh, if this oval is irritating you, you can just turn it off down here. Um, and then you can, you see that? Create a cool vignette effect, you know, just darken the edges a bit, bring it down. You can increase the clarity, decrease the clarity, <laughs> basically because it's affecting everything on the outer side of this oval area here. But I'm not going to touch the clarity because that's pretty epic. Okay, um, and the same thing goes here. You can, uh, on certain shots, you might want to, brighten this area from this direction across. So you could just click and drag. And then you can, uh... oh, so yeah, you can do that, actually. And again, this thing, you can go near it. Go, come on, yeah. You can turn the direction around, like so. Uh... As well. Come on. Do it, do it, do it. Flipping, flipping, flipping. Ah, man, honestly, I'm going to start making monkey noises in a second. Anyway, that's how you do it. Have a play. Fiddle with that. Um, I'm going to undo that. And then say you're happy with uh, your the look you've created for the image. You here can save your presets. Now, it's got a bunch of built-in presets. Uh, but you've got the user presets. And over the years, I've saved stacks of them. Um, and the way you do it, you have whatever the settings are now, and you just basically hit the save button, name it, uh, John Comp 1. Boom. And it's now saved all your presets. And you go down here, and it's saved as uh, is it John Comp 1. Right. Uh, let me see what other ones I've got here. Okay. Okay. No, no. So yeah, and I just go through these presets. I call like that John Comp one. Um, I think that's nearly done. Uh, I'm sure I saved one yesterday. Ah, here we are, John Tutorial. Boom. Okay. So this is the one I uh, prepared beforehand, and then I'm just gonna possibly adjust it again because I think the the highlights here are a bit too bright. So I'm just gonna. Paint in this area, bring it down a bit. Maybe some of the whites. No, that's a bit weird. 
um, the highlights, not the exposure. Just a little bit. There we are. And uh, there we go. I will hit OK. Step back out of this mode. And look at that. You thought that was good? Watch this. Once it does its thing. Boom. Epic. So there we go. Um, there's lots of other things uh, you could do, obviously, to and ways to go about creating these um, sort of composites. But uh, I think this video has been long enough <laughs> to keep you keep it going. Perhaps, you know, let me know. If there's other things you want to know, uh, then leave a comment um, on the video. And then I, I, I'll see if in future I can, um, I can uh, do another video for you guys and stuff. But uh, I think this is well over an hour long. And I think it's going to be plenty for you to get on with. And I hope you enjoyed it. And um, I wasn't too... Uh, like a bumbling buffoon uh, <laughs> doing this edit. Anyway, uh, if you did like this video, don't forget, please subscribe, share, comment on all that jazz. Um, so there we go. Happy days.